What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning into this episode of Undercover Vikings. Now, I want to admit that after watching this past episode, you know how, like, when you get off a roller coaster and your heart's like, and you're like taking breaths and your heart kind of like stops for a second and you're like just trying to get yourself back together? That is exactly how I felt. Um, watching this episode and some of you may be like like why the hell would you feel that way but honestly I think that this episode was one of the worst when it came to um, killings now the reason why I say this I know there wasn't a lot of killing in this episode they had Lagatha stabbing the guy and then they had um, King Ayla's death but I think the fact that this blood eagle was so excruciating just because of the fact that he was screaming so like they jammed and he's like ah and so like you kind of you kind of feel that um empathy that you you feel that emotion because you know what it feels like when you stub your toe or when you get hurt by something you know what that feels like so like him screaming every time that Bjorn like when Bjorn starts cutting and like you just feel the knife going down his back now when um when y'all Borg was um got that done to him he didn't scream he had to stay quiet in order to enter into Valhalla but that means nothing to King Ayla so of course you're gonna scream you're in pain it was agony and then to have Ivar like looking into his eyes like yeah die die that's what you get yeah yeah I hope you're feeling that I hope you're feeling that that was like on another level but I was just like <sighs> and Bjorn just seemed like just just pissed it did not I felt like it satisfied him but it really didn't satisfy him because he misses his dad you know he misses his father having to take on this leadership role now honestly you guys know I love me some Ivar but I think Ivar was completely out of his mind when he thought that he could lead this army there is no way you're gonna be able to lead this army you have not had the experiences that Bjorn has had it was right for Bjorn to take control and lead now he's like well remember it was me that he took to England it was you because ain't nobody wanted to go with him nobody wanted to go and then in the end it just made sense because he was the least um, threat to present, you know, he knows that um, King Egbert, well Ragnar knows that King Egbert has a fondness for him as he does for King Egbert, right? So he knows that King Egbert is going to have that sympathy towards Ragnar. And if you're going to bring your impaired child with you, it's going to be considered okay to send him home. So that is was your purpose of going to England. Not so, I, I don't know, he was given... Um, Uber, this whole story about, oh, to study the tactics and to do all of this. And I'm like, when did we see you do that? You sat in the castle until they sent you home. But of course, he has to be conniving. He has to be sneaky. He has to get his way in to try to convince. But Uber's like, yo, dude, like, what are you talking about? You cannot leave this army. You are not ready for that. But he does have a lot of rage. He's getting into his scary guy mode. But he was a beast when he was riding in his wings, boy. He was a beast. He was killing it. He was, like, riding and the whole screaming scene. I love Floki's scream, boy. Floki was like, I am going to kill you. I am going to kill you. So I'm pretty sure that bishop that we've been seeing in all these seasons He's gone. And I understand why they didn't show the battle. Because the battle was unnecessary to show. It was barely anybody there compared to the great heathen army. What is there to show? What really matters is the death of King Ayla. Now, a lot of people said they didn't see Ragnar in there. I would think by now he would have been like nothing. Because remember, um, in the last episodes when he was in England and they had turned him over to King Ayla... Remember that Bjorn was not even in that episode, which means he hadn't even made it to where he was going. And then to have to sail back and finish with this army and then sail to England, that's quite some time. I think it took them several months before they could return. And if you're in a snake pit, it's going to take you several months of being eaten away. You know what I mean? Now, because nobody went with Ragnar to England, he needed his sons to claim the revenge. And also, he wanted to die. So, he needed his sons to get the revenge. And so, this revenge with them going after King Ayla, that's for their father. 
Now, when we see the heathen army go to Wessex, that's going to be for those people that were killed when they tried to do this merging of let's be, you know, one people and let's have this out. But I understand King Egbert's position, you know? These are heathens. They come here to steal and to pillage. Why would I let them build on my land? I'm just giving them the opportunity to gain strength. So it's understandable why. Because not everybody thinks like Ragnar. Not everybody wants to be a farmer. They're Viking. They want to pillage. So I understand why King Edward's like, we cannot let these people, you know, do this in our land. We can't let them thrive in our land because if they do, they just might overcome us and we need to be able to protect our own kingdom. So I completely get it. And honestly, I just was so proud of Aethelwulf because he finally stood up to his father. He needed to, okay? All this time, you've been making me do all these things knowing you know, knowing that it's conniving, know that it's sneaky, but you're my dad. I'm going to have your back and I'm going to do these things for you, okay? You take my wife, you give me her bastard child to take care of as my own, and I'm doing all these things for you, but I never receive any, like, solid, I love my son. My son is worthy of this throne. He could care less. All he cares about is Alfred, which is not even blood royalty. Alfred is just royalty, you know? He comes from, he comes from an Englishman. He comes from a monk, okay? So he's not even blood royalty. I mean, through his mother, yes, he is blood royalty, but he's not from the exact line. It's not Aethelwulf's son. So if I were Aethelwulf, I would want to be like, yo, dad, you need to confirm to me because I have been doing everything to please you and you don't do anything to please me, okay? You've taken my wife, you've given me some kind of bastard kid, you're not paying any attention to my real kid. Like, I need some sign, something to tell me that, you know, what I'm doing is worth something to you, which, you know, I am very happy about. Now, what I wasn't happy about in this episode was Bjorn and Astrid. Now I'm ready for Astrid to die. Okay, she is not feeling, I'm not feeling this girl no more, okay? She is pretty, I'm not gonna lie, she is a pretty girl. But, why are you gonna sleep with Bjorn? I understand, you know, Bjorn plays a part too, whatever, and I understand in that place, it's kind of like a play on things because the same thing kind of happened with Uba and them. But, come on, you are the girlfriend to the queen, and you are sleeping with one of her best friend's husband and you're sleeping with her son you're cheating on her with her son okay whose back do you think that Lagatha is gonna have she's not gonna have your back she's gonna have Torvi's back and for some reason I don't know Torvi kind of did like a whole reverse thing she's like all wimpy and stuff he's saying bye to them and she's like looking all scared I'm like what the hell Torvi man up woman up Stand up for your man. I am hoping, I am praying that they are going to kill Astrid while Bjorn is away. Because how are you going to hug Astrid and you don't even hug your own wife? I hope he said goodbye to her before he even went into that hall to say goodbye to his mother. Seriously. Now, I don't know what's going to happen to Lagatha while they are away because it's obviously that this guy with the scar on his face is going to be doing something to Kattegat while the people are away. And this is all a plan of fine hair and fine hair the whole thing with fine hair and this girl was really like irritating and unnecessary it's like a dead storyline and somebody put that in the comments on one of the groups that i follow and i completely agree dead storyline why do we care that was not even necessary you're doing all this for a girl and then she goes ahead and marry earl good for you good for you find yourself a real viking honey she don't even look like a real viking she looked like she should have been an english woman now if he was fighting for Gisela, that would have been another story that would have definitely been another story so i know that in the next episode we are definitely going to wessex we are definitely going to be kicking some butt over there and i cannot wait to see that i know this video is long but i just had to share that with you guys i like the episode and i didn't like it just because of the stuff that bjorn's doing but then again we still have this muslim girl i have not let her out of my sight we have this muslim girl to look forward to can't wait to see you guys in the next episode bye